after the Russian Revolution, the uh, Soviets wanted to, the Russians wanted to drill Christianity out of people. They thought it was the opiate of the masses. And so there was a meeting where they gathered all the people in this one village, and one of the high-ranking communist officials spoke to about a 1,000 people. And in it, he tried to destroy any intellectual basis for Christianity, and he tried to show how Marxism was so superior to the Christianity that they had followed all their lives. And there was a priest on the stage who was forced to listen to someone just tear apart his faith. And at one point, the Russian official looked at the priest, and he says, when he's finished speaking, he says, do you have anything to say? And the old priest stands up, looks at the people assembled, and he says, Christ is risen. And as one, they all replied, he has risen indeed. Christ is risen. Today we are celebrating Easter, the Easter hope that even out of death, new life can come, resurrection can come. We are a resurrection people, and we are so happy that you are celebrating this day with us. It is my hope and prayer that the resurrected Christ will enter into your heart as you worship today. Um, We're having a new membership class on May 7th. If you'd like to be a part of that, please call the church office, and we would love to have you uh, be be a part of, and and if you would like to, join our congregation. So let us know if you're interested in that. Today we're also doing the One Great Hour of Sharing. It's one of the Presbyterian offerings we do. And if you would like to give specially to that, you can go online and earmark it, or you can send a check and designate it to One Great Hour of Sharing. This goes to needs that our denomination delivers all around the country. So if you would like to do that. But again, with gusto, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us join our hearts in the call to worship. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, hallelujah. God has answered us. God has come to earth to become our salvation. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad.
Let us join our hearts in confession. This is a day of celebration, and nothing should prevent us from lifting our voices in praise to God. We must not hide the things we have done or failed to do, the things that do not imitate the perfect love of Christ. We must not let them fester and stifle our joy. Therefore, let us bring them before God in confession. Resurrected Christ, there is nothing we can do to deserve the grace you give us. There is no way we can earn your love. There is no way we can be worthy of your forgiveness. And yet you shower these mercies on us. You have taken away the sting of death. Meet us where we are in our doubt and fear, in our regrets and shame, in our delight and awe. Meet us here in this place and call us once again to trust in you. God says to us, I have loved you with everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Christ says to us, do not be afraid. We need not be afraid. We are forgiven. We are loved. We are redeemed. Alleluia. Our first lesson today is found in Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, then 14 through 24 from the Message Bible. Thank God because God is good, because God loves, God's love never quits. Tell the world's people, God's love never quits. I was right on the cliff edge, ready to fall when God grabbed me and held me. God is my strength. God is also my song. And now God is my salvation. Tell the world, people, God's love never quits. Do you hear the shouts, hear the triumphant songs in the camp of the saved? The hand of God has turned the tide. The hand of God is raised in victory. The hand of God has turned the tide. Tell the world, people, God's love never quits. We didn't die. We lived. And now we are telling the world what God did. God tested us, pushed me hard, and didn't hand me over to death. Swing wide the city gates, the righteous gates. I'll walk through and thank God. Tell the world, people, God's love never quits. Thank you for responding to us. You've truly become our salvation. The stone the masons discarded as flawed is now the capstone. This is God's work. We rub our eyes. We can hardly believe it. This is the very day God acted. Let's celebrate and be festive. Salvation now, God. Salvation now. Oh, yes, God, a free and full life. Tell the world, people, God's love never quits.
The gospel lesson today is, of course, the resurrection story, and this year it's as recorded by John. Now we're going to pick up the story, but what happens before the text that we're going to read today is Mary has gone to the tomb to prepare the body of Jesus. If you remember, he had died right at the Sabbath, right before the Sabbath, and they didn't have time to prepare his body for a proper burial. So Sunday morning after the Sabbath, she goes there to prepare the body and finds the stone has been rolled away. She goes and she gets Peter and probably John, and they go to the tomb, they check it out. They don't know what's going on, and they leave, and they leave Mary standing there by herself. And this is where we pick up, John 20, chapter 11. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been laying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to the Father, and that your Father to my God, and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There was once a poor tailor from Krakow, Poland, who had a dream one night that there was a treasure buried under the Fifth Avenue Bridge in Warsaw, Poland. And being a faithful man and believing that God spoke through dreams, he decided that he would travel to Warsaw and dig under the bridge to see if he could find the treasure. He makes the long, arduous trip there, and he gets to the Fifth Avenue, Fifth, Fifth Street Bridge, and there's a guard at the bridge. And the guard stops him, and he says, What are you doing? And he says, I'm uh, from Krakow. And I had a dream that there was a treasure under the Fifth Street Bridge in Warsaw. And so I've come to dig it up. The guard laughed. Ha! He said. Ha! Dreams. I don't believe in dreams. He said, I had a dream that there was a treasure hidden on the floorboards of a house of a poor tailor in Krakow. Do you think I'm going to go all the way there and dig it up? The tailor realized that this was a sign for him, and he goes home, lifts the floorboards of his house, and finds a treasure there. The treasure he had been looking for all his life had always been right under his feet. Have you ever had that happen to you where you're looking for something and it's right under your nose? I had somebody come in to me once with their glasses on their head, and they looked frantic and said, Have you seen my glasses? I, I, I hate to say this, but once I looked for my keys for about 20 minutes before I realized that they were in my pocket, at least they weren't in my hand when I was looking for them. Sometimes the things that we're looking for are right under our noses, and we just don't see it. During the sermon series, we have talked about looking for love, and we've talked about looking for love in all the wrong places. We all seek love. We all want love. We all want to be loved. And there's a part of all of us that wants to love, to love another person. Not just in a romantic sense, but in a much broader sense, to care for, to have concern for, to encourage, to be with another person. We, we all have that. And yet, sometimes we look for that love, as the old country western song says, in, in all the wrong places. And some of those places just lead us down paths where we get lost, and some of those places can be very, very dangerous. 
You're looking for love. And during this sermon series, I've also been trying to tell you where we find love. We find love in, in the heart of God. We find love by giving ourselves to God and letting ourselves be loved by God and in return, loving God. But the message of Easter, the message that we celebrate this day is this. Love has been looking for us. Sometimes we get so busy looking for love that we don't see it when it's right under our own eyes. Nicodemus didn't see it. He was looking for love and the law of God. And even in spite of the fact that in many places in the law we are called to love one another, for him it was a matter of order and decorum. The law was a comfortable place. He wasn't in a bad place, but he wasn't in a place where he was going to truly discover the love of God. And Jesus blows his conceptions of love away by saying, love comes down from the Holy Spirit. The Spirit blows where it will, and you won't always find the Spirit in a book. The people who waved the palm branches as Jesus came in on Palm Sunday were looking for love. But for them, they were looking for the love of God to come to them in a political figure who would throw out the Romans and let them reestablish their nation as a well-respected nation among nations. That God would once again take seat on the throne through a king, through a ruler, through Jesus. And they saw Jesus as this revolutionary leader who would bring them back to their former glory as a kingdom that they could take pride in. Of course, we all know that it didn't work out that way. And that when Jesus came in on Palm Sunday, his throne ended up being a cross and his crown was a crown of thorns. Jesus came to serve and not to rule. He came to love, not to lord his power over people. Now Mary Magdalene from today's story was looking for love. And the fact is, she was looking for love in all the right places. She was looking for love in Jesus in the words of Jesus, when, when she does finally recognize him, she says, Rabboni, which means teacher, which is kind of incredible because women weren't allowed to be students of rabbis in those days. But she, Jesus was her teacher. She was looking for love in the actions of Jesus. She was looking for love in the tender eyes, the unconditional love, the acceptance and the encouragement that Jesus gave to her. And she was looking for love and giving her love to Jesus. But what happened? Jesus comes into Jerusalem, supposedly to reign in glory forever from a throne, and instead, everything got cut short. He's arrested, thrown on a cross, and thrown into a grave. Mary was looking for love in the right places. Where did it go wrong? Was she wrong to put her trust in Jesus? Was she wrong to give her life to him and to his message? Were the last three years just a waste of time? I mean, she must have been wondering these things as she made her way tearfully to the tomb on that morning. She had given her life to Jesus, and now it must have felt like her life was over. Did she look for love in the wrong place? Was it a mistake to put her trust in one man like that? She stood before the tomb, still in spite of everything, looking for love, trying to do that last act of love for Jesus, which was to prepare his body for the ritual burial. But now she couldn't even do that. He's gone. They had taken his life from him, and now they had taken his body. Mary was looking for love, and she was looking for love in the right place, but it was nowhere to be found. Instead, love found her. 
She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she said this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Jesus showed up to her. Jesus sought her out. You see, love, love comes to us. We've been talking about looking for love, and the whole gist of this series is how we should look for love, and we should look for love in the right places. But today I'm saying that we look for love, but love finds us. It, it's, kind, it, it's kind of a paradox. In order to find love, we have to look for it, but at the same time, we also have to understand that love finds us. Paul, in his letter to the Philippians, said that we need to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is doing the work in us, enabling us to work for God's good pleasure. We work out our own salvation while God works inside of us to bring that salvation to fruition. We look for love. We do the work. We, we worship Jesus. We come here on Sunday. We sing praises. We read. We study. We try to emulate the life of Jesus. That's how we look for love. But then we open ourselves up to a God who has found us and who loves us. You know, that can be hard sometimes. Mary couldn't recognize Jesus because of the tears. And they were very, very legitimate tears. She was mourning. She had a deep, deep grief inside of her. She was looking for love and it disappeared. And sometimes we feel that way. Even when we're looking for love from God when we know we're doing it in exactly the right way. We're doing what we're supposed to be doing. And then there are times when it seems God is gone. God has disappeared. God is no longer there. But God doesn't disappear. Sometimes we can't see the acts of God, the love of God, through the tears that we experience when we feel like we've missed something of God. But God is there. Sometimes we just have to open our eyes and see what God is doing in spite of our pain and in spite of our grief. Or sometimes we have to open them up and see God in spite of our joy. God can get lost in all of that. We open up our lives, and we find that God has come to us. The other message of Easter is this. Love wins. Love always wins. It may not seem it like that all the time. I'm sure it did not seem like that to Mary when she was making her way to the tomb, for it looked every bit like hate had won and had destroyed the one who came to teach us to love. But did it? Did it? It did not. Now, sometimes we have to wait more than three days to see love overcome. But we know it will. We know it will. Years ago, when I lived in North Carolina, there was a big basketball game clearly a Duke basketball game on TV. And <clears throat> I had a church meeting, unfortunately, that I had to be at. We'd invited some friends over our house to watch the game. And uh, my wife was there with these friends, and they were watching the game. And I was at the meeting, and I finally got out, and I was driving home. And um, I heard the game on the radio. And so I heard the tail end of the game. And I walk into the house, and I see that the game is, and, and, and Duke won the game. It, 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 it was close. It looked like they were going to lose at one point. But Duke came back and they won the game. And I go into the house and I see them huddled in front of the TV watching it nervously. And I'm like, what's going on? And they said, this has been a terrible, this has been horrible. It's, it's so close we don't know if Duke's going to win or not. And I almost said, they just won. But I realized that 
for some reason, and later I found out that some political event had happened. I think the president made a speech, and it delayed the broadcast of the game by 30 minutes. And so what I heard was the live version, and they were watching the tape delayed version, so they were 30 minutes behind. They didn't know how it turned out, and it looked like Duke was going to lose. I knew otherwise. I knew otherwise. I didn't say anything. I didn't ruin it for him. But I knew how it was going to turn out. And in the resurrection, we know how it's going to turn out. Love will win. Love is risen with Christ. It may not look like it at times. And as we look around, oh my gosh, it looks like love is not winning. But it will. Just as surely as Christ rose from the grave, so will love win. Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. Amen. Let us turn to God together. Oh, Heavenly Father, when we're down here trying to work our way through the mess of life that surrounds us, sometimes it seems like love is not going to win. Sometimes it seems like hate has the upper hand. Sometimes the voice of love seems so small, so frail, so weak. And yet we know that love does win. Love wins in the end. Help us to follow the way of love, to be people of love, to be gathered in love by you and to gather others with us so that we all might experience this great love of God together. We thank you for your great resurrection, which is a sign and symbol of a new life for us, a sign that no matter how bad things look, that something can come out of it, something miraculous, something amazing, something can rise from the dead. We thank you for Jesus being the first fruits of all who pass and who will also be resurrected with him one day. As we look forward to that, may we live our lives faithfully here. As we look back to those who have gone before us, may we know with confidence and surety that they have been resurrected as Jesus was. And although we don't know what that looks like, we know that our loved ones who have passed are with him, and we know that we will be with him. But also we know that the resurrection is about more than our, the death of our mortal bodies. It is about the rising of our souls, the rising of our spirits, the rising of love and hope and peace in our hearts, the rise of compassion. And may we live lives of resurrection. Even now we turn to those in this family that have needs that have indicated them to us and we lift them up to you in prayer. We pray, Lord, for those who are traveling amidst the winter weather warnings this weekend. We pray for Elizabeth and her extended family as they grieve the death of her former father-in-law. We pray for Pastor Murray's mother, who is failing under hospice care, that, that you would bring her and Murray and his brother peace at this time. We pray for the family and friends of Damon Simpson upon his passing and for Diane McMahon, hospitalized with a very severe infection. And we thank you, Lord, for Murray's safe return today, for all those who have recently experienced comfort and healing and wellness, those who have reached mileposts on their journey to sobriety and wholeness. Mm -hmm and for the part that this church has been able to play in, in their recovery. We thank you, Lord, for the new snow and for more and more snow as it piles up, that this will be a good water year, perhaps a shorter fire season and a longer irrigation season. All these things, Lord, we bring before you as your beloved children, children of Easter, children of our Lord's resurrection. And so we pray 
Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In the gift that Christ gave to us at Easter, Christ gave his all. He gave his body to be crucified. And Christ calls us to give. Maybe not our all just as he did, but Christ calls us to give our hearts and souls. And one of the ways that we show that we have done it is by giving tangible things. We don't give in abstract. We give in reality. And I'm inviting you to make a gift this Easter for the one great hour of sharing, if you would like to do that, to the work of this congregation that brings these services to you and that feeds and helps other people. If you want to give out of your heart, if you want to see the resurrection in your own life, I ask you to give freely as Christ impels you to open up your hearts to give as Christ calls. Oh Lord, we thank you for these gifts that have been given, for the work that they will do, for the people whose lives will be changed, the gifts of reaching out to other people in need, the gifts of being a listening ear, the financial gifts that come that help support this ministry. We thank you for all of these. And we pray that you accept them and use them for your glory and your kingdom now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. Go with Easter hope. Go with the love of God in your hearts. And may the love of God fall upon you like a soft summer rain. May the grace and forgiveness of Jesus surround you like the air you breathe. And may the power of the Holy Spirit work in and through you now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.